Hey, crafters, good to see y'all. Tom Creek here with Creek Bank Creations, coming to you with my wife, Julie, live from beautiful Perrysville, Indiana, the land of tall corn and not much more. We're glad to see you tonight. Creek Bank Creations is a small paper arts company. We have our own line of dyes, stamps, um, adhesives, our own paper line, tools, and uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. So visit our website at www.creekbankcreations.com. And if you use the coupon code TRAIN, woo -woo, that's T-R-A-I-N, TRAIN, uh, you'll get an additional 15% off your order unless you get a bundle special. And then we're, giving, or we're letting those go for about 30% discount. Speaking of bundle specials, well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. What are we doing tonight? You're wondering, what are we doing tonight? We are doing wreath makers. That's right, wreath makers. Wreath stamping. Re excuse me, wreath stamping. Wreath stamping, not wreath makers, wreath stamping. Did you get that? Wreath stamping. Now, wreath stamping is a pretty old concept, but it was kind of forgotten for a while. And when the stamp boards came out, it reinvigorated. It didn't reinvigorate it because not only could you do wreath stamping uh, fast and quick, but also beautifully. For example, there's one that That's we did. That's sideways. There we go. See how we, we've stamped that all you, around. We? We. 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 We, we did. We. Remember, I'm the crafting cowboy. I don't craft, <laughs> but I'm married to the woman who, is, who does. So here's, an, here's another one. Check this one out. Okay, get that up close there. You see that? But you see, each one of those little orange flowers has been stamped individually. Didn't work. Done there. So, so let's talk about the wreath maker bundle tonight, okay? With the wreath maker bundle, you get the wreath maker stencil. It's $5.99. You get the wreath maker stamp, 001. Get the wreath maker cements right here. That's a $35.97 value. On sale for $25.99, you're going to save almost $10, $9.98. That's called the wreath maker bundle. So check that out online, along with our other bundle specials. Don't forget to use the coupon code TRAIN for an additional 15%. And, of course, that doesn't include, that's not 15% off the bundles. Yeah, just They're already give it away, Tom. Just give it away. Just give it away, baby. And don't forget. Give it away. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Appreciate that. It works. Uh, don't forget. I already forgot. Oh, don't forget that all orders over fifty dollars ship for free. And with that, and without further ado, we're going to get Mrs. Creek here behind the camera okay. to do so her stuff. Your greetings, crafters. How is everybody doing? It looks like everybody's checking in. Good. I'm glad to hear you're not getting uh, totally buried under with all that rain. Hopefully. Um, Y'all are surviving. I know the southern part of the country is getting hit. We got the northern part of the country getting hit. So I don't know if you're a person of prayer, but um, we need to pray because we're getting whacked on every side. So we have uh, been setting extra time aside in our house to pray for the country and pray for the people that are in the northwest and the south and mercy is what we need. Lots of it. So, hey, real quick, quickly, I did want to share with you, I have been reading Jennifer Allwood, Fear is Not the Boss of You. Are you ready for this? How to get out of your head and live the life you were made for. So, um, I um, wanted to share with you what really struck me today. Well, first of all, last week, she shared this thing about how she um, asked her kids to um, mop the floor in the kitchen and the kids ignored her. And then she's like, I asked you to mop the floor. And then the kids had an excuse why they didn't mop the floor. And she got mad and she said, smashes her fist on the counter and says, I just asked you to do it. You need to do it. And she said, when God asks us to do something, he surely must feel the same way. I ask you to do it. You just need to do it. So this week, this chapter was called, um, What's Fear Got to Do With It? And this is what hit me this morning. Um, your fear does not release you from your calling. So whatever it is you feel like God's called you to do, if you're fearful, um, it doesn't release you from the calling that God put on your life. And God has a call for each of us. 
which goes with the scripture that my mother gave me. Does that give us a spirit of fear? At Christmas. Yeah. My mom put this in my Christmas card. Hmm, Should have known something was coming. Do not fear, for I'm with you. Don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 10. Right there. So um, if someone gives you a scripture or you feel like something was really meaningful, personal note on the back from my mother, um, hang on to them. I stick them on the wall next to my computer where I work, and it's amazing how it's just the right word at just the right time. And this year has been a year of me struggling through a lot of fears and frustrations. And so I encourage you that if you're feeling that way too, um, your fear doesn't release you from the calling. God's called you to do something. So you got to figure out what it is and do it, do it, do it, do it, because you'll be a blessing to somebody else when you do. So that's um, fear is not the boss of you. Really uh, recommend it. This is not like really deep, heavy, um, reading, but it is encouraging. So um, if you're a person that likes to read, we are going to, what I really wanted to do was just show you how to do this tonight. Did you put your phone on free Wi-Fi? I did. Okay. Are we okay? Well, some people are having buffering issues. I think it has to do with the stormy weather coming in, but I don't know. Yeah. Yes, I am on that Wi-Fi. Okay. I wanted to just show you how to do this, but then I realized that I have never, we haven't really demoed live the basic concept of wreath making. And so I should probably go and first of all, tell you how to do this basic concept. So there's a basic stamp set and the stencil. And this stamp set I specifically designed with some very unique shapes on it. And it's kind of different from what other people have on the market. There's some flowers and leaves and stuff, but there's also hearts and there's a cross and there's the sunshine. There's a music note. So it has some different images on it. And then this little cinnamon, the cinnamon stamp set is designed. These are really small. So these are great if you want to put them on tags, but they fit wonderfully in the center of the wreath. So they're not, that's a nice little stamp set to have. And it's got a little bit of everything. You're in my prayers. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Sending sunshine. It's got a little bit of everything. So I want to before we get going on the gnome card, which is actually the card we're supposed to be doing tonight, I want to um, talk to you. I want to show you how to do this first, because if you don't know how to do the basic set, you won't know how to do that. So what we're going to do is turn the camera down and get going. Let's do something creative tonight. Are you ready for creative? So that is helpful. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the... Um, stamp positioner and you can do this sorry I'm gonna have to raise my camera I got to be able to swing that door open without hitting my phone so it doesn't matter what kind of stamp board you use this is our wreath maker stencil and when you buy this it does have the I have them go ahead and leave that inside piece in the package I don't ever use it but I, I put it in there because we paid for it so there you go what you'll find about this template that's different from others is that I numbered the points. So we aren't the only people who have a system like this. Um, I just designed this for a specific reason, and tonight you're going to learn why I did this. So I have, you will find it, it is etched. So if you take a little acrylic paint and wipe on that, or you can take a Sharpie, and I like to have the points numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Also on here is a mark, a hash mark, one here and one here. This hash mark is crucial for what I like to do with wreath stamping. To me, if I'm going to do wreath stamping, I want to go back and die cut it into a circle. And I wanted to be able to put it up on our angel side circle card. So I wanted to size it so that if I own the angel side circle die, that stitch circle is in the angel side circle die package. If you don't own this, this is um, available as a bundle special on the website and it is a very versatile die set. So that circle fits perfectly. So in order for us to get started to stamp a wreath like this, you're gonna start with a four by four piece of paper and you're gonna set that in your stencil. 
And you see, I have my stencil taped down to my board. Now, I'm gonna put my magnet in the middle to hold everything down, and I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm gonna put a little dot right here by number one. So this is what the angel side circle looks like if you guys haven't seen it. Okay, just wanted you to see it. Um, so I'm gonna put a little dot by the number one, and then I'm gonna choose what stamp I wanna pull off of my stamp sheet. And we're gonna set up our stamps. Now, can you move up the images? Move up this way? Actually, I think we're doing okay. It's, it's, it looks pretty good where you're at right okay. now. Okay, all right. Um, we're gonna choose what image we're gonna put on for our wreath. And what I found today was that these little leaves make a really awesome sunflower, okay? So I'm gonna put that there. And when I put my image, when I set it for the first time, I wanna make sure that I'm to the right of that hash mark. So do you see this little line here? I wanna to be to the right of that line. That's what that little line is for. So we're gonna put our little stamps on there and we're gonna close the door and pick up the stamps and transfer to the other side. So if you're not familiar with how the stamp board works, the stamp board has this door that swings and you're gonna push and pick up your stamp and then we're gonna actually ink the stamp over here, okay? Now, Diane Morris from Ohio had a brilliant idea. When you ink over here, you're gonna ink that over and over and over. And if you're using a full size ink pad, you end up getting a lot of ink on the deck of your stamp board. So if you make a little shield like this with a piece of paper, you can use it to shield so you won't get ink everywhere. The hard thing about this is you, don't, you wanna be careful that you don't track up the ink. So there's my first image at number one. Now I'm gonna take that little dot and I'm gonna move it to where the number two is and I'm gonna ink over here on the right, that same stamped image again and stamp. And this is how stamping, wreath stamping is done. And we're gonna rotate. And I like having that dot so I know exactly where I'm at, inking and stamping. really important to keep the ink off of your fingers because you'll end up tracking it back on. Inking and stamping. My voice doesn't like talking. And Tom's like, hallelujah. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. I married a talker. Rotate, yes, you did marry a talker, but you talk more than I do. That's because I know more people than you do. <laughs> That's because you talk more. Keep going. Hey, please tell them how you're rotating. I'm turning it. Every time I'm taking my dot and I'm turning it to the next number. That's why I like to have the numbers and I like to have that little dot. Now my dot is right there on number eight, so I know exactly where I'm at. So, does that make sense? Anybody have any questions about that part? Now, to make the sunflower, I'm going to go back to number one. I'm going to take my stamp, and I'm going to reset my stamp. Decide where I want it, and I'm going to go over it again. So, I really think this kind of stamping is rather actually therapeutic because the other thing is you never know how it's going to turn out. And you can see how that those layers are building that sunflower. Any questions? So we have a dedicated set for this, but what's awesome is if you have stamp sets that you already own that have small images on them, you can use those. So last week when we were talking <clears throat> about the Autumn Gnome set, I saw that little 
sprig on the autumn greetings. It's the, I'm sorry, it's the gnome greeting set. And Tom, I think it's over there. The gnome greeting set. Nope. That um, I was like, oh, I think that would be really cool if we could stamp with it. So you can just get creative with how you do these. What's fun is, and there's my eighth one. I actually did this a third time on my sample. And you notice when you look at my sample, how there's darker areas of ink and lighter areas. And that happens when you continue to stamp. Like if I did this a third time, you would have those dimensional layers of ink. Adds a really nice touch. I'm going to stop here and I will show you how I did that inside. So I added little dot stamps because you might want those for splatters or you might want them for the inside of a flower. And these are the little bitty, there's little dots and there's bigger dots. So we're just going to put those right there and then pick it up. Let me get my one, get my start position. So my little dot is at my start position one. And I'm going to pick that up. What you need, hon? I was just checking. Do you know I, I keep putting the, the blog spot link in? Yeah, and it doesn't go. And, uh, YouTube won't, won't, won't let it mm. go. <clears throat> that may be because we haven't monetized our account. Mm -hmm. There's our first one. And then we're just going to rotate. And it's going to build that really cool center. What color are you using for the petals, asked Lee. Lee? Yeah. I was using um, Kathy Pooler, as Tom calls her, his friend Kathy. That's uh, Tiara. And this is icing on the cake. Tiara? There's two colors of yellow. Is that what you're selling? No. The yellow is called Tiara. And the inside, I'm using chocolate on the cake. One color of yellow, one color of brown. Do you you can. Any tiara in stock? I do not know. You would have to go look. You can um, use any of your dye based ink that you have for this technique. So if you own Stampin' Up! ink or Close to My Heart or the Tim Holtz Distress inks, I will tell you that I tried messing around. I really wanted to stamp this today, this leaf with a, um, like a boxwood, like a, mm, I really wanted to stamp it with peeled paint um, from Tim Holtz and get like a boxwood leaf type look. But... I only had it in distress ink, and the distress inks did not cooperate with the with the wreath stamping today. The the um, the uh, whatever element was in the distress oxides was bleeding out and bubbling on the edges, and I did not like the look. It wasn't giving me a clean, crisp image. Now you can see here, I've got quite a bit of white space in there. And that's because when I actually stamped that third design, I pulled that leaf in a little bit so that that inner part was filled. There we go. So you can see how that just makes a really cool image. And then you could go back in and add self-adhesive pearls if you wanted to. Here's what's fun. We can go back with the angel side circle die. And we can die cut that, and now we have a circle. So to me, when I designed this template, I designed it so we could do it on a 4x4 four four sheet. And then you can use it straight as a square and put it on a card if you want to. Um, but I really like to be able to go back. Like here's one that Diane did, and she just put it on a, this one. Diane used our cat set. Isn't that cute? So just you're gonna, just going to have to mess around and see, I would, I would think that you're um, probably going to be about three quarters of an inch. Here's one that Diane did, and she cut it in half. Are you upside? I'm picking them upside down. So top on the bottom. So this one, actually, Tom showed you guys earlier, <clears throat> comes off of the wildflower stamp set. Beautiful little image that it makes. So you just get your, I'll tell you what, once you start playing around with this, you're going to be like amazed at what you can create with and um, how much fun you can have with it. We're going to take our, so when we start with this, we're going to work on the gnome card. 
we need to make that little um, wreath. And what I thought was cool about this is, uh, you know, I, I just colored this with the um, colored pencil. But I think if you made these little sprigs all red, you would make a really cool Christmas a little closer. Christmas wreath. There you go. A little, little tighter into the camera. A little tighter. Oh, you can see the little gnome girl. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with a 4x4 four four piece of paper. <clears throat> and put that right there. And then when we start, we're always going... Oh, let's ask... A question. Do you have a question? I do. I'm going to go ahead and start setting this up and I'm going to work while you guys are doing your thing because I think at this point you kind of know where I'm going. <clears throat> do you have a question? Yes. Okay, so I'm using the little sprig off of Gnome Greetings and I'm just going to set it in there and stamp. Got to have the year too. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what you're talking about. Is it a TV show? No, it was a, it was a freighter. That uh, um, uh, Gordon Life that did a song about in the seventies. Okay, is that the one you were using and you got in trouble for using? No. No. So we're just gonna go around, around and around. And if you wanted to put another David little... Starsky is the winner. What? What is it? You got to tell the story because I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. In November 10th, 1975, a large freighter that carried iron ore, typically back and forth from, from Minnesota to Detroit and to Toledo, uh, routinely crossed Lake Superior with its load of iron ore. Well, on November uh, 10th, 75, uh, not only did it not make it to port, but it sunk. And I think there were 35 crew members that went to the bottom of Lake Superior with a load of iron ore. And um, Gordon Lightfoot in the 70s did a song that made the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald of the legend. So congratulations, David. Okay, I have... Finished my eight stamps, and I've just repositioned my little sprig. Thank you, Janice. It was to go. 29. I, I, I missed the Right I'm there. Glad that wasn't one of the questions, Janice. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of that. I'll play the song and you'll hear it. Okay. I, I know I'm familiar with the song. I was singing it all afternoon. That's yeah. Why the, that's why the... Yeah, that's why the question. My, my head is like a jukebox. Yes. I, I, I'm well aware <laughs> and you just keep going around and you can, what you'll discover when you start messing with this is that you'll be like, you'll think, oh, I'm only going to do two rows. And then you're like, oh, wait, I could add this. I could add that little leaf. I could, and then you end up with like five layers of things, but they are so cute and they make attractive cards. So next week we will do this same, we will use the template but we will use stencils and ink on it. And I absolutely love the designs you can make with it. And I have never shot a video with that. So we'll, that's a brand new, I've done wreath stamping before, but we haven't done it with a stencil. So that is our wreath. And we are going to take our piece off. We are ready to color and die cut. So we're gonna take our colored pencils and I just took my colored pencil from my chameleon set. And these pencils are cool because they have two tones on each one. And I just colored one dark and, and like one and then the other color all the way around. Okay, so I've got it colored. You're gonna go all the way around. And what's cool is the dimension that just the, happens with those two different colors. So if you don't have the pencils like I do that are two shades, just choose two colors. And do oh I see I left a little left a little sprig right there. Um, just do two different colors, and then um, what's fun is you can get the Gamsol and you can blend with it. So the Gamsol you can buy Gamsol, and then they have the blending stick and the tool. And you want to start with a clean blending stump, so you clean that off and get put your game salt. Usner asks, does the angel side circle die have all that is needed to make the gnome card That's base? a good question. So, so when you buy the angel side circle die, you are getting 
the circle that we talked about, okay, the circle that goes on the circle, and you get this base piece, that's your base of the card, and you get this rectangle piece, okay? That's what's included. So you make your base card out of the cardstock of your choice, and you cut it nine by 4.25, and you score at 3.5, and the instructions for this dimension are on the front of the package. So that's my card when you look at this piece back here, nine by 4.25, score at 3.5, and then you're going to cut this piece on your cardstock or however you want to do it. Okay, so let's put this together. <clears throat> so that is designed so that it sits right inside that card. And there's your fold. So tape on the back, and then you're going to adhere that in. And that fits right inside there. And now, a lot of times, I like to stamp my sentiment on another color just because that, like, pops up off of the surface. And this is my um, Happy Autumn that I stamped on the inside. You are a friend like no other. And that little leaf is in the greetings. This is the Gnome Greetings stamp set. Okay. Bobby Sands asked, asks, who makes the two-tone color pencil? Those, I've not seen them before. Those are chameleon, and there should be a link on my on our website. We have a link that says um, Amazon links. Gene Anderson. So write their names Gene down. And Lois back. So it, it's just a mess. Okay, so there's there's our card, right? Our base card. And we made our wreath. So we're going to take our die and set it over the top and right, die cut. Day to get on that thing. She did try. She was consistent. Diana McAtura quit trying. There we go. I don't even know what to tell you to try. There's our circle, and you can see it fits on there perfectly. Let's add some tape and stick it on. So this, the nice thing about this is that a lot of ah, you... Cindy Chilton has, has an answer. Listen oh, to this. okay, Cindy. If you are friends yeah. with someone that wants in the group, the person that is in can invite from their list, and they are instantly in. So that's why I asked Cindy, I think Cindy said her friends got in because she let them in. Say that again now? Okay, Cindy says, if you are friends with someone that wants in the group, the person that is in can invite from their list and they are instantly in. So that's how come other people, she got other people in the group because she let them in. Mm -hmm. Wow. So got my little girl here, and I already colored her. We're going to cut her out. Now, we do not have dies to go with these stamps. Exclamation mark. <laughs> so that's three. So um, I really thought that she needed, I cut her out in white, and I left Dorothy a little Asbert's white, saying. but I really thought she needed a gray mat. So I double matted her. Diane show you this. Yes. So Tom, what do you think about that? <laughs> There we go. So I just felt like she Lois needed a little pop of color. So that gray gives her a little pop up the background. And then I just went in and dropped in the self-adhesive pearls. And I used the orange, the red, and the brown. And I just started dropping them in. And you know, the more you put on there, I think the cuter it looks. So don't be afraid to put a bunch of them on there and accent away. Now I do want to talk, I want to show you how I did this panel over here because we have this cool thing going. I love this panel, this um, look. You know, I like to mess around with ink. So I wanna show you. We're gonna do some stencil work on that side panel, on that happy note. And I'm gonna, whenever I do stencil work, there we go. We're gonna put some tape on the back and stick that down. Amy says no, she wouldn't buy because it takes too long to get the machine out. Ah, uh, <laughs> you have to leave it out all the time, Amy. I'm using the line die tonight. And this little guy is just a good one to have in your stash. And what we're going to do is we're going to create that gray and orange kind of, I wanted like a textury type look out of it. So what we're going to do is take the Twilight ink from Catherine Pooler, Twilight. 
and we're going to ink up our stencil. So, you know, uh, we're going to use the J brush and in, with the J brush, we tell you to band it uh, one, one per color family and gray is in the black color family. So we're going to use our black brush, but we are using the twilight ink. Now what we're going to do is ink up the stencil. So we're just going to drag some ink all over and I want more ink than this has given me. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to take our stamp pad. And we're just going to real lightly tap it on there. And then I'm going to take my brush and swipe that back and forth. And you see what I'm doing? Swipe it back and forth. We do want to get rid of those obvious lines because they will transfer. Okay. And because this is a lighter color, you want to make sure you have it covered pretty well. Then we're going to take our sprayer. This is our baby blue sprayer. And we're just going to put a light mist on it. And this is specifically the sprayer is specifically designed to give us a really small ultra fine mist, which is perfect for what we're doing. And then we're going to take our tool, just push that down. And that's just going to give us that little kind of a line. Okay. Lee McMahon says. Love it. Lee now, what we want to do is go back the other way. We made our lines going vertical. We want to go back horizontal. This. Is that gnome sending? <laughs> gnome greetings. This is why we have two cloths in the Wonder Wipes. <laughs> we have a dry cloth and a wet cloth so that when you're doing a technique like this, you can keep your stencil dry and go back and go back again. If you have water on there and you try to go back, you're going to end up with big water blobs. Marietta and the Porter asked. Sometimes we don't want water blobs, yes. What was the die set for the circle base card? Question Angel side circle. Okay. That's the die set for the base card that we're using tonight. Angel side circle. There is a bundle special online that bundles it if you want to buy it as a bundle. Or you can buy it individually. Sorry. Okay, we've got our gray ink on there. We're going to mist. And then we're going to go the opposite direction. This just adds a little textury. I think it kind of looks folly when it's all kind of textury. I like the texture. Can you tell I'm into texture? There we go. Now, wipe off our stencil so it's dry, and we're using the dry cloth. So the wet wipe comes with two container, two chamois. The blue one I keep for wet, the yellow one I keep for dry. Now what we're going to do, I'd like to go back in and just drop in a little bit of orange. So we're gonna take our orange. I'm gonna pick up some orange. I'm back up. I'll take care of it. You do your thing. And I'm just really gonna lightly go back in and throw in a yellow line. And I really just not putting a lot of ink down there. I just wanted a hint of orange just to pull in the orange from the cardstock and to pull all those colors together. So you can see how that makes a really cool little technique to do for the side panel. And you can pop that in your card. So this piece I die cut with the die that came in the set. So that kind of explains why when you look at the Wonder Wipe, there are two wipes in there. Because sometimes you really do want to have a dry wipe. And now that when I'm totally done, I can go back and clean it with the wet one. But if I don't want a lot of moisture on the, on the stencil or the stamp, then I'm using the dry one. So next week we will do um, the stencil on the, with the template, and you will see how important that um, the dry cloth is. So I, I don't know how you live without dry. I need a dry one and a wet one. And when the dry one gets kind of nasty, you can just throw it in the wash, rinse it out, and then wash it, and you'll have a nice clean cloth to have on your work surface. So we're gonna put tape on the back of this and we'll finish off that little note. Okay, there's my card. Now I don't have my little my little guy, I don't have her attached. Little guy, little girl, I don't have her attached. But you can see how using that gray and that orange on that side panel pulls all my color together and just makes that nice little accent for my card. So come and join us next week. We will work on we will work on um, 
that will work with the template, the wreath maker template. And we will work on some different strategies to do this look. I love this. It's one of my favorite things. Have I said that 400 times? One of my favorite. Like, I think they're all my favorite things. The wreath stamping is my favorite thing. This is my favorite thing. So you can see how that makes a nice little card. We'll talk about variations with that. And it works great with the J brush. I'm gonna pull the camera up. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Now is your time to pick my brain or Tom's brain. Mm. So Mary Beth just said today, did you see what Mary yes, Beth just wrote? Um, anniversary of the husband and tomorrow's year. Mary Beth, I'm so sorry. That just about breaks my heart. I'm glad that you came and hung with us tonight. And just remember that God is not done with you. He has a calling and a plan for your life, and it's not over. So um, hang in there. We'll all say a prayer for you tonight. That God surround you yeah. as you continue to walk through this week. I don't know if you remember Absolutely. earlier, I way back in the spring, I talked about God surrounding us, that he promises us that he sets a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So when it feels like it's over, it's not over. He's got a table prepared. And he said he'd never just forsake for you, this Just for so you. Hang in there. There's an awesome song on um, YouTube called Surrounded by Michael W. Smith's Daughter. I recommend you pull it up and listen to it. All right. So we will see you Tuesday. Saturday. Saturday. If Saturday. you join us at, at Stampin' Scrapbook Expo. 2 if not... 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Next Tuesday, we're going to do um, more uh, work with the wreath maker stencil. May the God Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thanks for joining us. We love you all. Appreciate you. And can't wait to see you again.